almost everybody is excited about going into a new home. And during that time, it's, it's a pretty expensive process. And they, they're looking at the material. They're looking at uh, the guys that's going to work on the house. Those that are trying to subcontract the house out themselves. Uh, spend a lot of time on the property. They want to make sure they have quality material and that the contractors don't try and cheat them. And, but they want to have a nice, a real nice place. They want to make sure the ground is strong enough to hold the, the house for a long period of time. Don't want the foundation to shift. Just a lot of things in building a new home. But once they've gotten into that new home, they are extremely ex excited. Then there's a, the task of putting furniture in, putting pictures on the wall, and, and all the things that go with having and getting a brand new home. Well, today we're going to talk about a different kind of new home. A new home to where no expenses were spared. A new home where real rare material, precious stones were in abundance. Uh, a new home where there's a street that's paved with gold. A new home where there's no more sickness in this new home, in this location. There's no more worry. There's no more misunderstanding. There's no more political parties uh, where there's a lot of conflict there. A new home where there's peace in the entire neighborhood, in the entire country. This new home, this new Jerusalem. Thank you for attending Sunday School this morning. My name is Ricky Pitts, and I'll be your teacher for today. I'm teaching on behalf of Bishop Nolan T. Nolan T. Torbert. He is the pastor, the founder, and overseer of True Deliverance Holiness Church. And we'd hope you continue to come uh, every week. This is Today is the first time it's not going to be aired at a certain time at, at 9.45. It's going to be aired pretty much immediately. And then we're looking forward to seeing those that, that attend that will be here, uh, be in church this morning in person uh, during at 9.30, which is the time that the actual class starts. So without any further ado, we're going to jump right in and, and start our lesson here. So I'm going to pull up, pull up my, uh, there we go. And let's make sure that this works the way it needs to work. There we go. We're talking about a new city. And coming from Revelation chapter 21, verses 10 through 21. I want to open up with two questions. Number one, how can believers live like citizens of New Jerusalem during their lives here and now? I want you to think of, just kind of think about that. Number two, how can Christians respond to obstacles that might hinder their seeking peace in their city, in the here and now? I want you to read Jer Jeremiah 29 and 7 as a reference first as well. So let's kind of go right through it. Now, some of these stones, these are precious stones. I'm going to tell you right now, Ricky probably not going to pronounce these um, exactly correctly, but uh, just follow along. We'll get through it. We're talking about now the city's descent, Revelation 21, 10, and 11. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. We're talking about eternal glory, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Then we're looking at the eternal perspective, verses 12 through 14. And he had a, and, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And the names that written thereon were, well, which are the names of the 12, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east, three gates, and on the north, three gates, and on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now we're going to look at the city's detail, the measurement, verses 15 through 17. And he that talked with me, had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lied four square 
and the length, the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of this city, of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And we're looking at the materials in this city. And the building of the wall, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnish with all manner of precious stone. Here we go. The first, the first foundation was jasper. The second was um, sapphire. The third, Ch Ch chesedoni. The fourth, uh, an emerald. The fifth, sardex. The sixth, sardis. The seventh, crystallite. The eighth, obrol the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophorsus, the eleventh Jason, the twelfth Amnis, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. The gates were pearl. Every several gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. The street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. Now, let me pull that down and let's, let's talk about a little bit, a little detail on the city's descent and uh, a little pair of this little commentary on the, on the descent of the city. You know, a lot of folks don't, don't really understand uh, why it's so important to live in such a way, to live a lifestyle in such a way, to go to a place of total tranquility, complete peace. And they haven't accepted the fact that there are some that down here in this world is really and truly the dressing up room. And they, they have decided instead that I don't want the Lord, I don't want to live uh, with any kind of accountability. Uh, I don't want to live by any laws of the kingdom. I don't want to live, I don't want to modify my flesh. I don't want to, I don't want anything to be with being, to do with being holy. And I'm going to enjoy myself in the here and now. And have and missing the whole point that heaven, the new Jerusalem, as our subject of the day, is so much better than anything you can experience down here. You think you're having a good time now. You think it's beautiful down here now. But the eternal glory, since John, John states that his, his experience was in the spirit, so we can assume that this mountaintop experience was a vision that John had. And from the mountaintop, John saw a holy and a very great city of Jerusalem, this new great city of Jerusalem, the place where God dwells with his people, his people being his bride, Revelation 21 and 2. And mediation between God and humanity ain't going to be needed anymore in this new city because God's going to be present with his people in the city. And that, and that the city is from God reminds the people of the focus of their worship. It is, direct, it is directed, the, the worship is directed to the Alpha and the Omega. It is directed to the beginning and the end, Revelation 21 and 6. And he is worthy, God is, of the highest praise and of the highest honor for the citizens of that city. Now, many, many of us already know that this old world down here is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. We're citizens of a new city. In verse 11, we're looking at the eternal glory. The brilliance of God lit up the city. And John referred to this city, this place, as precious and crystal clear jasper stone. He did this to provide some kind of comparison for the radiance of God that lit up the city. And as we know now that a jasper stone today ain't a real clear stone. In fact, a jasper stone today 
it's kind of cloudy that stone is. But we're not talking about a jasper stone today. We're talking about the new Jerusalem. It's not made by the hands of man. And then in verse 12, we see the eternal perspective. The wall of the new Jerusalem is, is going to be different from anything we've seen here on earth. It's not necessarily a wall of protection. Uh, this great and this very high wall, as the word says in verse 12, holds the glory, holds God's glory and God's purity. 100% purity of God. I want you to read Revelation 21, verse 26 through 27. John does not, does not uh, uh, connect with a, with a particular tribe to each of the 12, uh, the 12 gates. All the names of the 12 tribes of Israel uh, seem to be listed at each gate. The 12 tribes of Israel were the foundation of God's people and the new Jerusalem. The vision, the vision that John had reassures everybody that was going to hear that all of God's people were going to be included in this very beautiful city called the new Jerusalem. I want you to read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39 through 40. Then we see the eternal perspective. The 12 gates of the new Jeru Jerusalem ain't going to never be closed. There's no need to have the gates closed to protect it from outside enemies because there ain't no outside enemies. So the gates are always unlocked. I want you to read Revelation 21 and 5. And then people from every nation, every tribe, people from every language was going to worship God in this new city. I want you to read Revelation 7, chapter, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. And as the new Jerusalem descended down from heaven, Revelation 3, 3 and 12, each one of the 12 foundations, you could see them. They were visible. And they had names of each of the 12 apostles in this city, in the foundation of this city, descending down from heaven. And then the earliest Christians considered see, the, the, the apostles and the ancient prophets to be the foundation of the church. That's the way they saw these great men that taught the word of God and walked the word of God and lived the word of God. It was a foundation of the church and a foundation with Christ. Christ is the lamb of God. Christ is the chief cornerstone. I want you to read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Now, when you see the presence of both Israel and the church, it emphasized the scope of God's covenant people. In this new Jerusalem, all of God's people will be united so that God's glory is going to be, going to be displayed. Because there ain't no bickering and arguing and arguing and complaining, not in the new city. And because of that, you're going to see the glory of God. You, you just imagine how it would be if we lived in a land where there's no confusion, there's no arguing, there's no, there's no more prejudice in the new city. Everybody, everybody's getting alone. Love is in the land, not, and there's no love because of an alternative motive. The motives are pure in the new Jerusalem. Now we're going to transition and look at the, the, the city's detail, the detail of the city. Verse 15, we see the measurements, and John had already previously used a reed to measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. That's Revelation 11 and 1. But here the angel provided a golden reed to measure the city, to measure the gates, and to measure the wall. Not just a golden reed is just right for a city that had a gold street, a city that, that had things in this city that no man had ever seen. So a golden reed was most appropriate for this very, very beautiful city. The image of verse 15 is kind of similar to what Ezekiel saw. Ezekiel, he, he saw a man whose appearance was like brass. He saw a man holding a measuring reed, Ezekiel 40 and 3. The man went on to measure the dimensions of the house of Israel. I want you to read um, uh, Ezekiel 40, verse 4 through 42, verse 20. And in both Ezekiel's and John's vision, measuring referred to, what did it refer to? The perfection of God's handiwork. You ain't never seen perfection until we, till we see this new Jerusalem. 
You know, they say in down here on earth, measure once, or measure twice, cut once. Something that carpenters say, measure once, measure uh, twice and cut one time. But in, in the New Jerusalem, it's going everything is gonna be so precise. Everything is gonna be at perfection. There's no mismeasurements because man didn't measure the New Jerusalem. This is a city not made with the hands of man and not, and not constructed with stuff that we see here on earth. And ain't, there's no wearing out in the New Jerusalem. And let me read a little bit more in verse 16 about in terms of commentary on this New Jerusalem and the measurement. The city, the city measures, look at this now, like a cube, four square, its length, its breadth, its height, all of them is identical. The length, the breadth, the height is identical. So the New Jerusalem then resembles the dimension of the most holy house, the place where God's glory dwelled among the kings. And I want you to read 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 20. And 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. You see, one furlong, one of them, is approximately 200 yards. So 12,000 furlongs would be approximately 1,300 miles. So then the estimated volume of this city is incomprehensible. The estimated, the estimated volume of this city is 2 billion not 200,000, not 2 million, 2 billion square miles. Some folks saying, how in the world all these folks gonna get in this one city? Well, well there you go. And, and, and it will appear, it will appear, it will be a place where God's glory, the appearance of God's glory is gonna be very, very evident. And then God sinks from every era, God's people from every era, can worship him in this city. Matter of fact, I want to read, I want to read Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9 really quickly. And uh, let me see, I'm gonna read this in um, well, I'm gonna read this in the New International Version. After this I looked, and there became there before me, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. Where they come from, John, from every nation. From every, from every tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and, hold, and were holding palm branches in their hands. There's a whole lot of folk going to be in this new land. And don't worry now, you ain't going to be bumper to bumper in the new land. You ain't going to be shoulder to shoulder in the new land. You see neighborhoods now where the houses look, look like they're this close together. Not in the new land. In the new Jerusalem, it's going to be big lots up there. In the new Jerusalem. Oh, my goodness. Don't you want to go? Now, now, so, so, so keep in mind then that there's a thing, there's something you have to do while we're down here. Now, in verse 17, the 140 and four cubits is equivalent to 72 yards. So then the wall's dimension, look, look at this, could possibly represent. 144,000 redeemed people noted in the book of Revelation in chapter 7, verse 4, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. And their inclusion in the city's design, along with the 12 tribes of Israel, the apostles and the prophets, acknowledge the totality of God's people in this very beautiful holy city. And, and God's people, me and you, will be included in the totality of God's people in this new holy city. We also see in verse 18 that John's go, John describes God as sitting on the throne. And look at what John says, uh, appearing like a jasper, like this very rare, very beautiful stone, Revelation 4, verse 3. And the radiance of God's presence, this radiance, surrounds the city. You've been to some beautiful places. I'm sure you've been to Rome, you've been to Italy, you've been to Paris, you've been to Hawaii, you've been to some places around the world that, that has flowers that you've never seen, like in our case in Alabama. You've never seen some of these flowers. I, I saw somebody the other a few weeks ago watching, I think, from Australia. You've never seen any flowers in 
uh, down under, uh, looking like the flowers and that you're going to see the thing you're going to see in heaven. But none, none, of the, none of the things that we've seen in the world, in any places that we may have visited, can compare to what you're going to see in this new Jerusalem. The city was pure gold. Listen to this now. Like, just like clear glass, the city was pure gold like clear glass. And it's also indicated the presence of God once again. And the rare element, this very rare element, is now going to become common material. What, what do you mean, Ricky? This, this pure gold is going to be common material. You know, during not long ago, we had a shortage of, of building material. Trying to, trying to build a building and, uh, and you had to wait so long because they couldn't get this in, couldn't get that in, couldn't get llama in. Llama went up through the roof and it became almost kind of like a rarity. But in this new Jerusalem, even pure gold and precious stones is going to be common material for the building, construct, for the construction of this city. Not only that, the purity of the city was, the purity of the city, here we are again, was like clear glass, not made with the hands of man. Don't you want to, don't you want to, don't you want to go to this new Jerusalem? And for the foundation of the wall to be built with precious stones is indicative of the city's heavenly nature. It's built with precious stone. Now, there's a rock quarry around here and as a matter of fact, in our neighborhood, there's a guy building a pool in his backyard. He has big, giant boulders that he's going to build around the pool. It's going to be a very beautiful pool from what I, we can see with a, with a water slide going down in the pool. This is in, in, his, in his backyard. Going to have like a, almost like a pool house built on to the, back, to the backyard. And the grand, his grandchildren live next door. And the, and the son and daughter, uh, the son and daughter-in-law, or daughter and son-in-law live right next door. And they brought all these big boulders in and uh, because they had to bring them from this rock quarry. But listen, in the New Jerusalem, it's going to be stuff in that New Jerusalem that's going to be so precious. And it's going to be, they ain't got to go and find it. They, they, oh, what are we going to get? The, oh, no, no, not in the New Jerusalem. And that, that explains these precious stones and explain the heavenly nature of this place. You see, the beauty of the New Jerusalem stands in direct contrast to the earthly beauty, which is temporary. And the wealth in this earth is temporary. Everything you've acquired in this earth is temporary. I don't care how much you got. Millionaires is temporary. And let me go a little bit further. Billionaires, the things they have here, you may think it won't ever run out. But at some point, even that's going to run out because the one that holds it is going to die. Ain't no ending in, in the New Jerusalem. Ain't no shortage in the New Jerusalem. Ain't no say, well, you know, we, we, we temporarily out of this in, new, in the New Jerusalem. And so then you see, a, you see a listing of all these precious stones that we see found in, in the word of God here. God on his throne and the glory of God are the, are the imagined with uh, imagine, or he can see it as the appearance of a jasper stone. And it's something like a sardis stone. And you know, those of you that have studied precious stones, you know how beautiful they can be and they are, and you know how expensive they are because those that can cut them, these artists that can cut them and display them as art and put them on rings, you don't get them things very cheaply. Modern understanding of the, one of these stones, this cal chalcedony, uh, was a, a kind of coarse. Although its meaning is, is not real clear in the word of God here. We don't have a clear, Revelation is, you know, it's not the easiest book to understand. So this passage then is only the mention of all these other stones. This is mentioned also, that's mentioned here we see in the New Testament. Also, there's no, there's no need for a church up there. Ain't no temple in the New Jerusalem because the, uh, of the, the mediatory work of the priest is no longer needed. The priest don't have to be a mediator between God. There's no need for a mediator between God and man because he's going to dwell in the New Jerusalem. And God's dwell with his people. 
He dwells with them as, as if they are a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of priests. I want you to read Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, chapter 5, verse 10, and chapter 20, verse 6. The foundation stones serve as, the commentary calls it, the outerwear. I mean, wow. These precious stones serve as the outerwear of the city for this new heavenly city. You know, you see sometimes in a home, you got outerwear could be siding or outerwear could be brick, you know, just a, but in, in, in this new Jerusalem, precious stones are going to serve as the outerwear. And the heavenly city is described as the bride. The heavenly city is described as the lamb's wife. I want you to read Revelation 21 and verse 9, and then also 21 and verse 2. And this these are these elaborate jewels in the city. Uh, it's going to be worn like, like a bride is wearing these elaborate jewels, getting ready for her wedding day. You know, a bride gets all dressed up, boy, they put on a pretty dress, they have all this other stuff on, and everything because they're getting ready for the groom, and you're getting ready for that wedding day. Well, a wedding day is coming, coming, and the city is coming, is going to be descending. You're talking about a wedding. It was, this is one that nobody wants to miss. In the ancient times, small, even small pearls were extremely expensive and just extremely, you just couldn't, you couldn't, they're very valuable. And then you want to read Matthew chapter 13, chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. And the size of the wall, now think about this, is 144 cubits, which meant that the pearls was, was, was un, the commentary calls it unnaturally large and incomprehensible. The value was, you can't even put a value on it because it's hard to even fathom trying to appraise one of them. So it was extremely large. So John also speaks of a singular street, a singular street, that was going to be made with pure gold. Can you imagine? A road made of pure gold and, and had as transparent as the glass. Even the city's road is more refined, more valuable than anything that you can, you can, you can give a human equivalent to. And John went on to describe a river, a pure river and the water of life in this city. The water of life was Chris crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and flowing down the middle of this golden street. And like, and then also like trees lining a boulevard, you see the tree of life that stood on both sides of the street. The commentary says somehow, because those that studied this lesson, these guys that are, that are experts in the, in the word of God that wrote the commentary, it baffled their mind. You know it's going to baffle our mind because we are not theologians. He, they said somehow this, this, this big old tree here, this tree of life, stood on both sides of the street. I want you to read Revelations 21, verse 1 and 2. Class, you know what? We're going to bring this thing to a close. But everybody in this class today, you, you know, we want to go to this new Jerusalem. But as I mentioned, there are some things we have to do in the here and now. And the Lord has put it in his book. There's no top secrets here. It's all in this book right here. It's called the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. They say, that's the book for me. And then there's some that say the Bible, mean, the Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth, B-I-B-L-E. But why not follow these basic instructions before leaving earth in preparation for this new Jerusalem that's going to descend down from heaven, this heavenly place. And we're going, to, we're going to get into some other things as we get studied more and more in the book of Revelations. So I want you to hang in there and stay in and uh, plug in. Those that are attending in, in person, attend in person. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you got to study some more. And this little few minutes here ain't going to be enough. Hey, look, y'all have a great rest of the day. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Uh, not necessarily at the same time because we're going to put it on, online immediately and uh, so you can watch it anytime you get ready. Y'all have a great Sunday and we'll talk to you hopefully soon. Take care.